Hello everyone, this is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com and host for Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Radio Broadcast. I wanted to bring to your attention and discuss with you a new bill that they are trying to enact. Introduced by Mr. Buchanan on January 3, 2017, which was referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. It's known as H.R. 115, also known as, quote, the Thin Blue Line Act. And we will go over that, and then I'll discuss other topics. So H.R. 115 is to amend the Title 18 United States Code to provide additional aggravating factors for the imposition of death penalty based on the status of the victim. So what it says is, is being enacted by the Senate and the House of Representatives, the United States of America and Congress assembled, this act may be cited as the Thin Blue Line Act. Aggravating factors for the death penalty. Section 3592C of Title 18 United States Code is amended by inserting after paragraph 16 the following. Number 17, killing of law enforcement officer. A. Defendant killed or attempted to kill in the circumstance described in subparagraph B, a person who is authorized by law to engage in or supervise prevention, detention, investigation, or prosecution, or the incarceration of any person for any criminal violation of law, to apprehend, arrest, or prosecute an individual for any criminal violation of law, or to be a firefighter or other first responder. The circumstance referred to in subparagraph A is that the person was killed while he or she was engaged in the performance of his or her official duties because of the performance of his or her official duties or because of his or her status as a public official or employee. And that is the end of that bill. So why do I not support this bill? And I believe this bill needs to be stopped. Number one. Every individual's life is important. There should be equal justice under law. If it is not equal and somebody has uh, more of a protected status than another individual, then you are creating a real problem within our justice system. It should be equal. If one person is murdered, it should be the same punishment for another person whom is more murdered no matter what uniform they are wearing on top of this if you also notice and i am sure that this is done with good intentions however as we know the road to hell is paved with good intentions so as we can see over here in here this is going to be in order to enact the death penalty. Well, if they're not going to enact the death penalty for other individuals who murder someone else who's not wearing that blue uniform or not wearing that other uniform just because they don't have a badge on it, then they should not be enacting it for ones whom do. Time and time again, we have also seen on many occasions where quote unquote law enforcement officers are acting outside their capacity, even though they are in uniform, even though they have that badge on, they are acting unlawfully against 18 U.S. Code 242 under color of law. However, under this, if somebody were to act in self-defense of, let's say, an officer doing a no-knock warrant, if you will, in a home that it was the wrong home and they bust in that house and they pull guns and the person thought it was an invader and they shot the police officer thinking it was a criminal this would possibly make it to where that person acting in self-defense whom had no knowledge of who they were thinking that they were a criminal breaking into their home could actually get the death penalty for protecting their home we need to really look at things in that type of situation. We also need to remember that like, for instance, the Bureau of Land Management on many different occasions has come out in militaristic style up against the people of the United States of America. The ATF has done the same as well, along with the Branch Davidians and different things like that. 
have caused many, many, many people to lose their lives, whether it be for unlawful search and seizure, whether it be for breaking into individuals' homes in which they didn't have a warrant for, or oops, they were went into the wrong home, or where they went in and they busted into the wrong home, somebody had a remote control in their hand and they shot a man to death. This is not acting, even though it was acting under color of law, even though they were there in their quote unquote official capacity, they were acting unlawfully and have caused many lives to be lost in that case. This needs to be stopped. Each individual who is charged with murder needs to have their individual cases seen before a jury. Even though time after time it is not done anymore, most of the time it ends up in plea bargains, to make someone a special class is not only unconstitutional, it is not right. I would suggest that everybody get on board, start making some calls, and let people know that we need to be against H.R. 115. This, you can find other information about this at the House Judiciary Committee. And uh, Bob Goodlett is over, the, he is the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. As you know, today's date's May 3rd, 2017, and here is the new update for the House of Representatives Judiciary Committee. Bob Goodlatte is the chairman. This is important information and I hope you share it. This has to be stopped. And while I am sure it is with all good intentions, these are agree going to be egregious to the violation of individual rights. It states, Washington, D.C. is adding to the House Judiciary Committee's work to protect and aid law enforcement. Today, the committee approved two additional bills to enhance the safety of probation officers and the public and to honor the sacrifices of first responders killed in the line of duty. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Rob Bob Goodlett, Republican of Virginia, issued the following statement on today's committee's approval of these bills. Quote, law enforcement officers across the country have a dangerous job and daily put their lives at risk for their fellow citizens. Sadly, many law enforcement officers are killed in the line of duty, leaving their families and communities devastated. We have a duty to honor their sacrifices and provide tools to prevent senseless acts of violence against law enforcement community. The bills approved by the House Judiciary Committee today will help further these responsibilities. I thank Representatives Reichhart and Larson for their work on these important bills." Unquote. The committee approved the Probation Officer Protection Act of 2017, also known as H.R. 1039, introduced by Representative David Reichart, Republican of Washington, by a vote of 15 to 7. This bill protects public safety by giving probation officers the authority, while in the performance of their official duties, to arrest a person without a warrant if there is probable cause to believe that that person has forcibly assaulted, resisted, opposed, impeded, intimidated, or interfered with the probation officer or a fellow probation officer." Unquote. Probation officers run the risk of facing hostile environments or physical threats, said Representative Reichart. Despite encountering the same dangers faced by much of the law enforcement community, they have limited tools to protect themselves. This bipartisan bicamera bill empowers probation officers to protect themselves and frees up time of local law enforcement officers who would otherwise have to accompany or provide backup for the officers. I am pleased today this bill has moved one step closer to finish line and I urge my colleagues to do the right thing and give it their full support. I will continue on the next bill in just a moment. First of all, this is resisted, opposed, impeded, intimidated, and this is without a warrant. No, it is not your responsibility, Congress, or the Judiciary Committee to make sure through um, that they are 
quote unquote safe, your only responsibility, constitutionally speaking, is to protect the freedoms and liberties of the individuals. And I know these individuals have a difficult job. However, I will say this, you signed up for that. You should not ever be given the authority to arrest a person without a warrant. You claim it's only without a warrant if there is probable cause. Well, if there is probable cause and you have a affidavit of truth sworn to be true and correct, then you shouldn't have a problem obtaining a warrant by a judge. This is another way to violate the rights of the people. Let's make this clear. 15 people voted yes. 7 people voted no. So 8 people have decided to push a violation of our unalienable rights confirmed in the Constitution for their quote unquote safety issue. I understand you deal with some really hardened criminals. I do, I, I get that. <clears throat> However, it is time we move back to a constitutional republic and quit with this quote unquote democracy of 15 to 7 to violate our rights. When you choose to take a job that has issues like that, then that is your choice. People voted to put Trump into office to quit with the violations and the overreach of the government and of the states violating their liberties their freedoms and their constitutional rights and they are being violated left and right right now under your nose these are not all the way through we need to call and fight every one of the ones that we are discussing right now the committee also approved honoring hometown heroes act of hr 1892 sponsored by representative john larson democrat of connecticut by voice vote, legislation honors law enforcement by permitting the American flag to be flown at half-staff when a first responder is killed in the line of duty. First responders are the nation's front line of defense here at home, said Representative Larson. Whether they are responding to a terrorist attack, natural disaster, or traffic accident, our police, firefighters, and emergency medical personnel are always the first to answer the call and selflessly put their lives in harm's way to protect our communities and our nation. The unfortunate times when the ultimate sacrifice is given, they deserve the respect of having our nation's flag flown at half staff. Amending the flag code is the least we can do. I would like to especially thank our Chairman Goodlett, Ranking Member Conyers, and our lead co-sponsors, some of whom are first responders themselves. That I have no problem with. So here we go. Here are some more that have also just been approved today. The Thin Blue Line Act, H.R. 115, authored by Representative Buchanan. The legislation adds as the murder of a state or local police officer as an aggravating factor for a jury to consider in deciding whether to impose the death penalty in a capital case. If it is a state issue, federal government has no authority to act on it in the first place, and they know this. They are violating the rights of everyone. Absolutely no on HR 115. No on HR 510. The Rapid DNA Act of 2017, introduced by Representative Jen Sensenbrenner. This bill helps identify the guilty and free the innocent by allowing rapid DNA analysis machines to be used at local police stations. 
Rapid DNA technology expedites DNA analysis for suspect identification purposes and allows local law enforcement to accurately identify a suspect within hours as opposed to weeks when evidence is shipped off to a lab. And like I said, I am sure these are all with good intentions, but the reality is, how do we know that the DNA is going to be collected appropriately? Is there going to be special individuals there who have that kind of training? Or is this going to be left to someone just to collect it and hope that they did it right? Another thing is, are they going to be allowed to pull this DNA without a warrant? Yes, your DNA is covered under your Fourth Amendment right to a warrant. You cannot search C's without a warrant. Once again, a violation of our liberties. We also have the Lieutenant Osvaldo Abradi Correctional Officer Self-Protection Act of 2017. I have absolutely no problem with this bill. I think this is a good bill. Sponsored by Representative David McKinley. This bill helps protect federal law enforcement officers and their Second Amendment rights by directing BOP to provide a location at every federal prison facility outside of the secure perimeter for corrections officers to store their personal firearms. That I absolutely agree with. So yes, on HR 613, no, HR 510, no, HR 115, yes, on HR 1892 and no on HR 1039. I will repeat that once again. The bills that will violate your unalienable rights, which are supposed to be protected in the Constitution of the United States of America, are HR 1039. Call and tell them no. On H.R. 1892, yes. On H.R. 115, no. H.R. 510, no. And H.R. 613, yes. As always, I will have links in the description box below. Watch your backs, check your facts, Semper Fidelis, and good night.